So what we're doing now to improve our script is we want to paint like a yellow dot on the screen as to where we are. We want to indicate when the International Space Station will be overhead. We still want to show where it is right now. The question becomes, well, how do we get that data? Less on how do we paint it to the screen? How do we interact with that API? Well, it turns out this particular API resource will allow us to include a question mark. Typically, after the question mark, we can pass input. And the input we're going to pass is our latitude and our longitude. This particular resource, API resource, one given Latin longitude as input, returns a bunch of data. It says, oh, sure, you, I'll burn processing power and return to you for free uh, when the International Space Station will be overhead. Not just like one indication, but a couple. It's kind of neat. We can then search through that JSON object and grab out the key value pairs we're interested in and paste them to the screen. So I've already written that code out for us. But before we do that, let's take a peek at our web resource here again. So right up here, the URL that I went to is the same URL we were working with, the same API resource. It's just I included the question mark. And then I have the Latin longitude of roughly where we're located at on the east coast of the United States. Uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. If I jam that into my web browser, I can actually see the decode of what I'm going to get back. I'm being told, okay, given your Latin longitude, I'm returning to you the next five passes of the International Space Station. So I can see now I'm going to be looking for something called response. There's a response key whose value is five other keys. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. They are keys whose value contains duration and rise time. Whose value, whose, yeah, they're keys whose values then are duration. I imagine that's how long it will be overhead. Um, and the rise time, there's your, how long it's, uh, the actual time stamp of when it's going to be. So let's go ahead and see if we can't pull that data back. We don't want all of them. We'll just go for the first entry. And we'll see if we can't use that and paint that to our screen as well. I already have the code written that will allow us to do this. So let's just go ahead and look at it. Uh, up at the top of the code, the first thing I did is say import time. So we're importing time because um, we want to work with those timestamps we just saw. So again, this isn't necessarily a lesson in how to do uh, GUI graphics. It's not necessarily a lesson in time, but we need to import that standard library in order to manipulate those timestamps we saw. We just want to make them more friendly. So if we hop down to uh, the additional code we've added to the bottom of this script, besides that time piece, is right here. The first thing we're going to define is my location. So yellow lat, yellow lawn is how I've decided to define those. Uh, I then create a my location. And once again, I'm creating a, an object with that turtle library. Um, here, the, the pen up, this is how I'm, I'm able to describe where I want this thing to be. Um, I want it to be the color yellow and this is its position I want, right, go to. And the dot is, okay, the size, I want it to be a dot, paint a dot to the screen of a size, I think that's five pixels. And um, hide turtle, otherwise it, it it literally makes a, a little turtle on the screen, I believe. I, I think that's just to get the uh, it, to, it to format uh, more nicely. I then describe my pass ISS URL. So I go, hey, uh, that, that URL that I, I, I want to, to use, that API resource I want to use, I just want to know it as a string pass ISS. And then I want to concatenate that string with question mark lat equals, so literally that. 
uh, followed by the string value of yellow lat. So yellow lat is that float that I had created previously. And I want to concatenate that with and lawn equals, and then the string value of yellow lawn, which I passed earlier, which was negative 76.6. So all I'm doing is building out a completed string that looks just like this. And that's all that piece of the script does. Uh, by doing it that way, I can just manipulate these coordinates up here. And ultimately, my pass ISS string gets built in a different manner. Uh, response is then equal to, this is the same code we saw before. You know, if I wanted to be super efficient, I could probably put together a function to do this. Again, it's just going for digestibility in this one. Um, I'm saying, hey, go ahead and once again, open my new finished web resource, uh, decode it just like we talked before. I then am trying to define over, which I'm saying dig into result, go to the key response, go to, it looks like this time I'm not using, I said I was going to use zero, I'm using one. And I could have put zero in there, I chose one. Uh, go to the first, so if I dig into this guy, I said dig into response, and for some, whatever reason, I'm not saying go to zero, I'm saying go to one right here, go to the first value and get duration and rise time, that's fine. That's fine, um, and get rise time. If I wanted to, I could change that to a zero, or a two, or a three, or, or a four, right? Zero through four would all be acceptable values. Um, style, I'm just choosing now uh, how I want to define my font, and you can see style becomes a uh, argument that I'm passing down here. I'm going, hey, my location, go ahead and write. So my location was defined as you know, where I have that dot. I'm saying I also want to write some text out there, uh, which is ultimately the time that was harvested. So I'm the, the, I, I want to take time, C time over. So take the time that was harvested. And um, what this guy will do is format it in C time is takes a timestamp and makes it digestible to a human. And the style I want was defined up here. Uh, this causes the program just to spin its wheels, right? So let's go ahead and save this up, run it, and see that it works. File already have it saved, didn't make any change. And Python 3 API code 03. Dot .py I can run. Uh, there's where the International Space Station is currently. And there we go. There's where I am painted on the screen. It looks like Monday, July 23rd at 21 hours and 18 minutes, uh, the International Space Station will be overhead. Uh, so there you go. I hope you learned a little bit about interacting with APIs, a little bit about JSON, uh, a little bit about maybe playing with graphics and making taking data and making it more digestible to humans. If you like what you learned, uh, we didn't have a lot of time together, but go ahead and click on over to Alta 3. Sign up for one of our Python classes. We have Python classes that'll just get you started. Like maybe this is way over your head. We have simpler than this. We have ones that fall right into this sort of range. Let's spend a whole week talking about APIs and web resources and SSH in place, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, and then we have advanced classes as well. Advanced, I mean, we want to use Python for a specific application, say uh, networking automation or uh, maybe for server autom automating server side tasks, right? Admin type tasks. That's it. Thank you so much. Be sure to check out some of Alta 3's other videos and uh, hope to see you in one of my next classes.